Hello, my name is Fernando Escobar and I'll be presenting you this tool named Redmine. Redmine is an open source project management tool which we currently use at my workplace. It has the basic features needed for you to quickly get started on your project. It is a web-based app built on Ruby on Rails. We use it at my workplace. Uh, we're a team of four people and it's this, this tool has been great in just helping us keep in focus on the tasks that we have to do at that time. We're four people and it's a small company, so what usually happens on a small companies is that you get uh, different, many different tasks since there's not a lot of people. So using this tool we were able to, when it, once we have to do something else, we could go back to our actual focus. This video is divided into four sections. The first one being the advantages, so where I'll be discussing the advantages of Redmine against other project management tools. Then comes the disadvantages, which is just the disadvantages of it against other tools. The basic features, which uh, will help you get started with any new project that you may have. And finally, the video demo, where I'll be showing how to do, how to implement the basic features. But most importantly, I'll be showing you how easy it is to install any extra plugin or do any of those customizations. The following are the advantages of Redmine. The first one is that it's open source. Open source is a development model that permits free access and modification via a free license, which means that you have access to the complete code base and are free to change anything in it. This is great because you are able to tinker with implementation, which means if you something you don't like about this tool, you can change it yourself. Uh, there's no need for somebody else to do it or if you want to have something that it doesn't have, you can just implement it as you need. The second, the second good thing about being open source is that it contains a lot of plugins. Since many people have actually used this tool, they had their own set of problems and they have implemented their own set of solutions and sometimes they will actually publish them as a plugin. So you could just take it and put it in into your into your implementation of Redmine. Then the third main the third main one inside the open source category is that it's independent. You're independent for any third party to provide patches. If there's any issue with Redmine, you can just go and fix it yourself. It, that this is great because you don't have you don't depend on any other no other third party person or third party company to actually fix the problem that you may have. The second main advantage is that it's free. It doesn't cost you any money without limits. Usually uh, these tools come with a license called freemium or that's what they call it online, which usually it lets you use the tool for free for a certain period of time or up until a number of users or up until a number of projects. But this is great that it's free for startups since they don't have to invest any money on uh, on this tool and uh, usually as a startup you don't have that much money so then you don't have to pay anything in that sense and the second thing about it is that there's no licenses issues so you don't have to keep track of uh, who has a license and for how long it is because usually licenses have for like a year they they expire in a year and it's by user there's none of that thing so you don't have to worry about any licensing issue. The third main advantage is that you have local hosting, which means that you have you have the implementation locally. You don't need to be online to use it. One can say that now at this time everybody's online, but usually if you have an IT department where you work, they don't like the situation. So having it locally it keeps your IT department happy. Having it locally is secure within your local network or virtual private network. Since it's not open to the to the exterior, it's much more difficult for somebody else to see your information if you are saving some kind of proprietary information or some important information inside the tasks. The second great thing about having it locally is that you have a physical backup. So if there's a storm, you can just do your backup on a disk and just take it take it out with you. 
when one when you have it online you just never know so it may be that the company stops working what if they just go bankrupt today you just lose, lose it all it has happened in the past where companies just stop working for any reasons so although it's a really unlikely situation it might happen but why you risk it since you have just a local backup then you're fine this tool has also its disadvantages. The first one being that it requires somebody with some technical skill to do the customization. It doesn't contain a user-friendly way to customize it. Usually it requires some knowledge of uh, Bash if you have it on a Linux server. And uh, it's, it just make it, makes it more difficult, somebody that does it, is not exposed to command line interfaces to do any change. The good thing is that it works fine as it is. Uh, uh, you must have uh, good te some technical skills to get out the most of it, which are the plugins and the, the customization that you, ca you can do. In. The second disadvantage is uh, that it contains just a basic graphical interface. It may not look as modern as other tools, but the good thing about it is that it helps you focus or at least do the tasks that you need to do. Sometimes when there's a lot of features, a lot of buttons, it's difficult to know where to start. That's more true even with newer, somebody new to the tool. Anyways, Redmine contains, besides plugins, you can also put your own themes if you, wanna, you want it to look much better. So again, what I like about it is that it's simple and uh, it makes it really easy for somebody new to know what to do. There's actually, it has a page called My Page, where a user just goes there and knows his list of tasks that he has to do, and I think that's great for just keeping focus on what needs to get done. So now I'll go through the basic features of Redmine. The first one being uh, that it has a, users a user access control, which means that you can create your own users and give them uh, visibility by project, like that if you have many projects, um, you can just give some u some of your users uh, access to certain project uh, by user type. There's actually two built-in roles, which is the developer. The, the user that is a developer is able to update a task, is able to set what's the percentage of, uh, of progress, but only the manager is the one that is able to close the task. So usually the workflow would be somebody uh, doing development and then a manager kind of checking if the task was done correctly. The second basic feature is the projects. You can create projects and then you can also create some projects within those projects. Each project is able to have a wiki page where you are able to describe aspects of the tool or aspects of the theme that you are actually developing with it. It also contains a versioning system that lets you assign tasks per version. So let's say that, that you want to fix a bug for version 2 and you have another bug but your target for that bug is going to be version 3. That's the way that the versioning system works. And it has tasks which can be translated into user stories, epics. Uh, everything is actually just a task which has a status and a progress percentage. Okay, so now I'll be showing you how to use Redmine. What I'll be supplying is with a, a file that is a virtual machine uh, based on Ubuntu server that I created, so you can just recreate it anywhere. Okay, so the very first thing that incorporates this virtual machine is to download VirtualBox. Uh, if you have a Windows, yes, the Windows host is fine. I already downloaded and installed it, so I'm just going to run it. Okay. I'm going to be providing with this file, uh, which is an appliance file. It just contains a virtual machine with Ubuntu and Redmine. Ok, 
okay so it will be showing like this let's click start the login is FIU and password FIU the very first thing we do is if config and then now we know which IP we have and uh, that's the IP we're going to use to do an SSH to just connect to the tool, you can use PuTTY what I use is uh, git bash which you can just download it from here this is the one, I already have it ok so let's go and see which IP we got we got 10.1.0.145 so what we do is we go here let me just have it one second here so I can on the side so I can just see this IP it's 10.1.0.145 slash redman and this is what you should get so to know that it's working uh, the very first user is called admin with password admin we're going to use that as your admin user we will create users step one developer one if I use student I'm using as a password okay a second one step two if I use oh wait developer two step two if I use student, if I use student, let's create, okay. So we have two users created in the system. Now we will create a one project. Let's create a project, my first project. There it is. It includes uh, this identifier. Is you can just go directly by putting that here. And, and uh, sometimes if you have a, a web page, you can use uh, your own web page to put it there. Here you can. This is the uh, the modules to install for that project. Um, time tracking to track track time. Uh, this is pretty much self-explanatory. Is what most tools have. Let's go create one. Okay, so we are back. There is our project. So now we have to assign them users. So we go here, and then members. Then here we have developer one, it's gonna be a developer, developer two is a developer, and then this is our admin user, TP admin as a manager. And here that's the uh, user access, so you can you can select roles, you can create your own roles also uh, on the on the administration and roles and permissions. You can here uh, edit which permissions uh, you want it to have. Okay, so let's go to page so then we have one project so this is let's I'm still the admin so there's right now on the system two users two developers uh, let's say that let's say that it's just a team of uh, three people and uh, I just want to create my first story it's gonna be a feature then uh, first user story Uh, it's going to be normal, you can set your priority we will assign it to the developer one and yeah this is one and then we will create another one for developer one also so I can show you the page that I wanted to show to assign the person, developer one okay mm, oh, well it's not a bug actually <laughs> yes a feature books would be bugs will be whenever you have at least your first release a new issue now 
So, so far I assigned two tasks for user one, and now I'm going to assign another user ta uh, st story task for uh, user two. User two, and then create. So this is what I like about Redmine. It's uh, here you can see the the issues or what features that you have to track. So the good thing about it is that at least you developers, they don't really need to see all this. They can just go to their page and they, they will be able to uh, see what is it that they have to do. So I want to simulate one of our developers logging in so you can see how it works. So to, okay, so it's 10, that one, that's here, that's 145. Sign in. We use, let's say, dev1. If I use student, this is a password. And he just goes to my page. And see, he has both his, the two, uh, the two issues that we assigned, that's what he has on his page. He, do, he does not care about the third issue. And this is what's great about it. So let's update both of them for now. So just go my issue, user issues, and then edit. And then we're gonna change it to change change the status to in progress. Just put 80%. Submit. Now let's just sign out as, and then sign in as developer two. Developer two. If I use student issues, actually my page. You see, this, that's what he has. Now let's uh, edit and let's say that we have a hundred percent progress on this feature. Submit. This is a list of all the issues. You can see the others one, but the good thing is that on my page, he, he will only see what's assigned to him. That's all. So we go back to our admin um, view. Here we have the, uh, the issues. Oh, here I am, yes, new and in progress. It has a Gantt chart view, which most of them do. The thing is that uh, we just did it on the same day, so it doesn't show, but it, uh, it contains this feature, which most of them do. So as you see, it's pretty much the, uh, it's, it's really easy to use. You just have your tasks. If you want to apply, um, if you want to apply mm, sprints, you can just create your task with a two-week spans, and then make them depending on each other. Now I will show you how to install a plugin, which is the main feature, the most important thing that I think about this. As far as you can see, let's just go back to our to admin view, overview. It has an, you can see the activity, what happened today here. So as we can see, I mean, this is all the options we have, right? So what we're going to do now is we will install uh, a plugin. Uh, we will install an uh, an IL plugin, for instance, that will let us we will let us have these cards. These are uh, the the cards that tell you in progress or uh, where the, these cards that move, move around. I will show you now. So, I mean, this is the way that uh, that is done. You just go to Agile. I mean, you just go to Google for it. So it's Redmine Agile plugin. open a you can do it directly on on this, uh, this console but the problem is that it makes it more difficult to copy and paste any code any uh, command and so what I'll do is I'll just use bash 
the uh, I'm sorry the git bash. So the, the server that uh, the, the virtual machine that I provided it comes with OpenSSH, so you can just SSH into it. Uh, if I at this is the e, a IP one that zero that one forty five. If I you and we are there. So the way to to install the plugin is this one. For example, this one it has a download now, so we just get this link, copy the location, and then we have to go uh, to our Redmine folder. In this case, it's user share Redmine. That's our the root of Redmine in this virtual machine. Uh, we go to plugins. I wanna just do super user since it's I'm gonna be uh, we're gonna be asked a lot of times. So then uh, wget and then the the address here it is. We get it. Then it's there. We wanna unzip it. Okay, we have to install unzip. I just forgot to put it there. So we go and zip Redmine. So it's the Redmine IRL. So now what we do is, I mean, you can just follow the wiki here. Uh, I'll do it. Anyways. So we have, it says here, you have to go to the root of Redmine. Then run this command. Okay. Then add the uh, the dot. It comes with its own uh, tables. So we just run it. Now it's there. Now I, we have to restart Apache. So service Apache. It's the the web um, the web server that I'm using here. So start service Apache two. Start. It says right here that you need to start Redmine. And that's what it means in this case. And now we'll go to. Let's close this one. It's, it's the first time that it loads, so it takes longer. Go to administration, and now we have Agile. So here is the options that where you want to put the cards. I mean, what is it that you want to uh, use the board items? Here it shows even. So let's just go to our main project. We go home. This is the project. And then we go settings, modules. And now this is the new one that we just installed, which is Agile. And now we, we have this, this tab. And what it does, it show us, sh shows us uh, our user story. So we have this, this, uh, uh, this interface to, to actually move around our tasks. And you can just drag and drop. You see, they say that that one is resolved. And they say this one is in progress. So see, it's, it, it, was, uh, it was simple. Uh, once you get it, the the, uh, the only difficulty is that you just need to have some kind of knowledge of Bash, but it's just basic knowledge, and uh, I th I think that's that's why uh, uh, at least in, in our team we all know some basic of of Bash and Linux, and we were able to to just do many of the changes. You can also change the DIM, which is I mean if you don't like the look of it, you could also change the DIM. Let me see. I uh, think we just Google for it. Agile, actually, Redmine Deems. No, wait, this one had it. Yes, I'm sorry. Deems. So let's, let's install this one for instance. 
download also it's free great let's copy the location it tells you how to install it here so on public then on pro public teams so let's go back to our bash and then go to what it was <coughs> public I think here teams and yes this looks like it so we do wget just like the other one wget just gets uh, whatever file online then the path and then we do unzip so it's there now you see it and now we remove the um, we just proceed to remove clean up the uh, the zip because we don't need it anymore and uh, does he mention that we have to you may need to restart okay let's just restart which is the Apache which is running the Apache is the one that is running the the uh, Redmine so service Apache to restart okay now it says here go to administration settings and then click display This is what I love about Google. You, you can just find anything. Administration. Settings display. Settings display. And then we select A1. That, that's the name of it. Click on save. And now we have a different user interface. If that's, uh, I think that's great. You can just change it yourself. Uh, if somebody doesn't like uh, the, the current one, the stock one, then you can just change it to have a more, more modern look. There are many themes. I mean, this is only the ones from this page. And, uh, there's many people that have created their own themes. So yes, I mean, with this I conclude the video. Um, I hope that you learned something from it. And, uh, and yeah, I mean, this is uh, as a summary. I mean, the great thing about it is that it's open source. There's a lot of plugins around because this Redmine is been since 2006, so there's many people that have done a lot of plugins to it. The great thing is that being open source, you can actually do changes inside it. It's free. There's no limits, and you can have many users. That's great if, let's say, you outsource your development to some other country, then let's say that you have a lot of users there, so you don't have to pay for each of those. There's no licenses issues for that. Mm, no, uh, no having to worry about uh, when is when our license expire for which user. Sometimes it gets complicated that way. Uh, and the great the thing is that it's uh, local hosted, so you have it locally. No need of internet. Uh, if you lose internet, you can still work still work on the thing. Although I know it's kind of difficult because Google is the answer to most things, but. Still, it's possible, uh, but it still it has its own disadvantages, which, as you can see, I mean, it's not, it's easy if you have some basic knowledge of Bash and uh, uh, some Linux uh, knowledge or at least uh, some kind of command line interface um, exposure to. And, uh, and the GUI is basic, but uh, I very quickly, very, I very quick have been able to just put a new, new theme. So thanks for uh, watching.